So why support James Cockle? What's the difference between James Cockle and James Shaw? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. Um, I want you to know this is not an attack video. I'm not here to point out all the problems with James Shaw. I have a huge amount of respect for him and what he's done for the party. But I do need to um, explain the differences between the two of us so that you, the members, have all the information that you need to make a decision when you go to your um, local branch meetings. In the last election campaign, this is the approach that the Greens had. We said um, we may drop below 5%. So please give us your vote because if we drop below 5 we'll be out of Parliament. So we were looking for perhaps soft Labour support and we were looking to remind people that if, if they want the Greens in Parliament, they've got to give us their vote. And the other thing that we said was we'll be at the heart of the next Labour government or we'll be the conscience of the next Labour government. A vote for us is to pull the Labour government to towards the, the environmental side and the, and the social side of things. And a vote for us is to make more progress in, in a Labour government on these issues that we care about. My approach is different in our campaign. The time is now for us to make it clear to people that Labour is not capable of dealing with the crises that we face. Crises in poverty, housing and homelessness, uh, climate change, ecological collapse, infrastructure and mental health. Labour's not capable of dealing with these problems because Labour is stuck in a mindset that they cannot get out of. That mindset is neoliberalism. Labour's not capable of dealing with these problems. They've shown that they're not capable of dealing with them. The people understand they're not capable of dealing with them. They may, just may not realise why they're not capable. And we need to express that to them. They're not capable because they're stuck in a mindset and a worldview that makes it not possible for them to make those changes. I'll be pushing to say to explain why the Green Party is the party that is capable of not just tinkering around the edges, edges and, and making subtle, small, um, little tiny incremental changes, but of fundamentally changing direction because that's what needs to happen. So the other big difference between the two of us is in terms of our policy settings. Now, it might be hard to, to find the difference because, of course, I'm sure we're both very much in favour of Green Party policy. I would argue that I'm more in favour of Green Party policy than James Shaw is. So currently the direction on climate change in, in particular is that, that we are pushing for a transition to renewable. So we're wanting to change our energy supply, our electricity supply to renewable energy. Um, a conversion from our gas guzzling cars to EVs. Um, in terms of agriculture, we want to we want to keep agriculture out of the ETS. They don't have to they don't have to participate. So those are the kinds of changes that we're currently pushing for with our settings. And and th the expectation is that we can basically carry on the way we are. There's going to be changes, but basically we're carrying on the way we are, and everything's going to be fine. And and the economy is going to continue the way that it is. My position on these on these things is quite different. Far more important. In fact, this is so much more important that, that if we had to choose one or the other, it would be better that we did this. And that is that we downshift our consumption. We downshift our energy usage. What that means is that we reduce the um, cars on the road. We, we invest heavily in um, public transport and we, and we remove most of the cars on the road. That's what we need to do. That's the fastest thing we could do to make a huge difference to our um, climate impacts. It's a big ask, but it's what, it's what has to happen. In terms of the agriculture, it, my view is, is understanding that our agricultural systems are not just um, you know, a problem for climate change. They're also a problem in many other areas. So we are importing blood phosphate from Western Sahara. That's coming in. It's an external um, need. So it's not a sustainable regenerative um, uh, ingredient to our agriculture. It goes onto our farms. We, we, we suck the water out of the rivers and then we, we allow the water to go back and leach into the rivers, which is contaminated with, that, with those pollutants. Um, then we burn coal to dry the milk in our industrial energy systems. So my, in my view, what we need to do is convert our agriculture, convert our food production away from um, so many cows. We actually need to reduce the herd numbers. We need to bring farmers into the ETS and have them paying their fair share of, of those um, emissions. We need to um, ensure that all of our agriculture is regenerative. That means it doesn't require any of those external inputs. It doesn't require phosphates stolen from Western Sahara to, to in order to survive. It doesn't require stealing the, rip, the water from the rivers. That's what we need, is we need for these systems to be absolutely regenerative, not, um, you know, not, not systems that are destroying the planet. 
those are the big differences really between the two of us, um, particularly on climate and ecology. If, you, if you're with me and you think we need a major change, we need a major shift, major downshift in consumption, then yeah, give me your support. Get out to your local meetings, tell your delegates, vote for James, James Cockle. Thanks. See ya.